local webcasting for a worldwide audience. You are listening to Radio Lewis, where the music matters, and this is The Rock Show. I'm Ben Fuller, and this is another of the Doing What They Do Best series. This time it's Iron Maiden. I promised you there'd be one. They've been around since 1975, formed in Leighton in East London. Been a couple of line-up changes over the years, but they're still with us. Their discography is impressive. 40 albums, including 16 studio albums, 13 live albums, 4 EPs and 7 compilations. I've picked the ones that I like in my doing what they do best. So please don't argue. If you want to do your own list, feel free. We're going to start. We're running free. Ah, the debut single from Iron Maiden, released on the 8th of February 1980 on 7-inch vinyl, reached number 34 on the UK singles charts, and it was written by Steve Harris and Paul Diano. I'm not the biggest fan of Paul Diano, so I very rarely listen to the first two albums, but I thought it would be churlish not to include them. So next track is from Killers, and it's Twilight Zone. <laughs>
Now, that's the full single from Iron Maiden. Now, strictly speaking, not an album track. It was a standalone single, but it did appear on the US version of the album. And it's been on all the remastered copies ever since. So that's why I say it came from Killers. I've also got its B-side, Wrathchild. Wrathchild. Now that was initially supposed to be the A-side of the single, uh, but the band felt that Twilight Zone was a stronger contender. I did mention that it didn't appear on the uh, British version of the album, but it also appeared not just on the US and Canadian versions, but on the Japanese version, although it was mistakenly labelled as Details of Twilight Zone. This came about because the band also sent a telex explaining the song to their Japanese colleagues headline details of Twilight Zone which they mistook for the name of the song itself never mind it's a great track but now we move on to possibly my favorite Iron Maiden album of all time this is Run to the Hills Game. 
one was a favourite of my old buddy Neil. The uh, sixth single, the first from the third album, The Number of the Beast. And the first single with Bruce Dickinson as vocalist. Credited solely uh, to the band's bassist Steve Harris, although significant contributions were made by Dickinson. It remains one of their most popular songs, with VH1 ranking it number 27 on their list of the 40 greatest metal songs. My favourite from the album to follow, The Number of the Beast. Woe to you, O earth and sea, for the devil sends the beast with wrath. Because he knows the time is short. Let him who hath understanding reckon the number of the beast. For it is a human number. Its number is 666. I left alone. My mind was blank. I needed time to think to get the memories from my mind. Did I see? Can I believe that what I saw that night was real and not just fantasy? Just what I saw in my old dreams were the reflections of my woman staring back at me.
Oh, what a great tune. The title track of the album, of course, and the second single from the album. That made number uh, 18, I believe, on, on the UK singles charts in 1982. The song caused controversy in the United States where its religious subject matter caused outrage amongst religious groups, but it remains one of the band's most popular songs, and it has been performed at almost all of their concert tours. Sadly, I've got to leave Number of the Beast behind now. This is The Flight of Icarus. From 1983 and the fourth album, Peace of Mind. It was the first single from the album. The band's first single to be released in the US, becoming one of their few songs to gain substantial airplay in the States, peaking at number eight on the Billboard Top Album Tracks chart, the highest position of any Iron Maiden single in the US. Also a success here in the UK, peaking at number 11 on the UK singles charts. Despite being one of Maiden's most famous songs, Flight of Icarus was not performed live after 1986, until it was finally performed again on May the 26th, 2018, in Tallinn, Estonia. Another great track from the album now, this is The Trooper. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yeah, it's a tribe of the first release to feature the drummer Nico McBrain, who replaced Clive Burr on drums in 1982. One of very few songs to get a lot of radio airplay in the States. It peaked at uh, number 28 on the mainstream rock charts over there, and achieved success in the UK, peaking at number 12 on the UK singles charts. I'm probably going to upset some people with this show because I've missed a lot of albums out. There's too many to fit into an hour and I didn't want to have to do a part two. But for now, we're going to uh, stick with the run in order and take something from Power Slave, the wonderful Two Minutes to Midnight. <laughs>
from 1984 from the fifth studio album Power Slave. Their tenth single and their first from the album. It rose to number 11 on the UK singles charts. It made number 25 on the Billboard Top Album tracks in the States. The band's first single to exceed five minutes in length and remain the longest until the release of Infinite Dreams in November 1989. Another track that caused an awful lot of uh, controversy now. Bring it order. Let me tell you. 
Now, I released in 1989 as a single by Bruce Dickinson, recorded and released for the soundtrack of A Nightmare on Elm Street 5, The Dream Child. But it appears on Maiden's No Prayer for the Dying from 1990. Steve Harris liked it so much when he heard the finished product that he persuaded Dickinson not to put it on his solo album, Tattooed Millionaire. And it hit number one here in the UK, uh, their only number one single to date, despite the fact that it received very little airplay by the BBC. In fact, Top of the Pops refused to play it when it was in the number one spot. The song also topped the finished charts and number six in Ireland. I think it's fantastic. And uh, I'm not sure we need the Auntie Beeb deciding what our delicate little ear rolls can hear, which is why I played it, because I love it. Next one is Fear of the Dark.
are the title track to the ninth studio album released on the 11th of May 1992. It was the third studio release to top the UK albums chart and the last to feature Bruce Dickinson as the group's lead vocalist until his return in 1999. It was also the first album to be produced by bassist and band founder Steve Harris and last to feature the work of producer Martin Birch who retired after its release. Now this is the bit where I said I'm going to upset a few people because I have left out everything with Blaze Bailey and gone on to Brave New World. This is Wicker Man.
Yeah, The Wicker Man from Brave New World from 2000. The first release since Dickinson came back to the band. And uh, Adrian Smith as well, who left in 1990. As well as the band's first studio recording as a six-piece, as Yannick Gers, who replaced Smith in 1990, remained with the band. I think it's a pretty bloody good album, I have to say. Next up, you got The Alchemist. Alchemist from the Final Frontier, the 15th studio album from 2010. 
and until the release of Book of Souls, it was the longest studio album they'd made to date. That's not a single, but I think it's a great tune. And I am very rapidly running out of time. So as I've mentioned Book of Souls, I'm going to leave you with Speed of Light, the single from Book of Souls from 2015. This has been Iron Maiden doing what they do best on The Rock Show. I've been Ben Fuller. Thank you so much for listening. Till next time, stay safe. ta <laughs>
Radio Lewis. Local. Community. Community. Webcasting.